Ogun State Police Command arrested Yetunde Badebo, 25, for attempting to sell her a three-year-old daughter for 700,000 to Saturday noon, 38 hour on. Aladia Street in Sagamo. The arrest occurred on July 25, 2024, after the resident reported seeing their negotiation, but they were denying the allegation while none confessed. The case will be transferred to the State Criminal Investigation Department earlier in July 2024. A similar incident occurred in Anambra State where Chinyere Chuku 38 attempted to sell a two-year-old with the help of the 17-year-old daughter. Okay, I remember the last time I read this kind of story and I asked my guests a question whether... Uh, selling of children is now a recruitive business in Nigeria where mothers just come up with the idea of, okay, let me just give birth so that I can use and make money. Um, someone has been caught in Lagos where she was trying to sell a three-year-old daughter. And of course, we had a similar uh, story uh, from Anambra State where a woman tried to sell her daughter with the help of her daughter. Like the first daughter was ready to help in order for them to be able to sell the younger one. And all of them bows down to economic hardship. How hard is economic in Nigeria that mothers are now selling their children? Uh, it's, just, it's more than one factor. It's not just economics. No, I'm just saying in what the response they always give each time a question is asked. Why did you carry out this act? They will say it's because of the hardship. Uh, maybe they should start selling themselves <laughs> so that we know that yeah, things are really hard for them. But I said there, is, it's more, there, there are more than one things involved. Mm. First, maybe, yes, things are hard, but we have so many mothers. Is that an excuse? Who are keeping their children, who are not selling their children. So for me, I think the most important factor, the second one, is the mindset. The person who thinks that this is a product for sale. The mother, maybe she feels, as a woman, she will have another child, but the, the thinking that goes into the head that makes you come to the decision to want to sell your child is beyond economics, is beyond hardship. It's the person's state of mind. That person is not uh, caring for that child he has or she has, and that person is not even um, thinking of tomorrow. How much money will they give to you? It will be finished. But Which it, is 700,000 to start but with for this a one. a child is something that if it all goes well, if means the child lives and grows to pass through the processes, it's a gift and a source of joy for as long as you live. So I think that the, the more important factor in coming to that thinking is the person's mindset. The person is not caring. The person is not... Uh, uh, even desires of, 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 of future good is concerned for today gratification. That is if the child is actually their own. If it's a matter of a house girl or something, we can understand. But this one, your own child. I know mothers like to claim, I carried it for nine months, I carried it for nine months. You know all that. And yet you want to sell, sell the child for how much? So it's not just the hardship, because all of us are in the hardship. But the thinking, the mindset that makes this person think that I can sell this child, like a product, like something that you just can just part with. It's the person's mindset. Okay, now, there is this, um, I, uh, this case where people adopt children at a very tender age, but maybe one year or not even up to one year, months, because they want the baby to grow up and see them and also know them as um, yeah, parents. their parents. But in a situation that we now have buyers who are ready to buy a child of nine years, a child of 13 years, a, a child of three years, already the child must have already grown up to know that this is my mother. Like, we know that there's one thing about children that when they, when they stay in a particular environment for a long time, they tend to forget about where they came from, especially at the age of three, four, five, six, right? But in this situation that we have buyers who are willing to buy a child of any age, what exactly are they up to? Is it just because they want to have a child, or is it because they are doing this for something else? What exactly are they doing? Uh, the buyers may not directly want to have a child, but you know there's this business of human trafficking. Mm. 
So that also now comes into play. The buyer may be a middle man or a middle person who, when children are bought, they sell them out again. So that may be another thing that is at play here. Sell them out to steal someone that needs a child at that age. Yes. Yeah, we saw something from Lagos State yesterday where a baby was, uh, uh, I mean, they actually adopt, uh, kid, I mean, sorry, arrested one a woman, what a, I mean, parents, what they were trying to do naming ceremony. That was a, a ten, baby of, uh, I think, that, three, three months. And what happened is that they caught the person that uh, collected the baby from the parents, that stole the baby, and they kept moving. Then we realized that before this baby got to where they wanted to do naming, they had a chain of more than six persons. From one, from Mr. A to Mr. B buyers. to Mr. C, buyers to Mr. C, they keep buying. And <laughs> the more, the, the funniest part of it is that the more it moves, the more the value reduce. Reduce. And like in a sense that, uh, the, let me say the price, because now it's seven hundred thousand. The next person that will buy the child might buy it at the rate of five hundred. The next I will buy to keep going till the price reduce to a, 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 a barest minimum. But again. If you do not have buyers, there's every tendency you will not have sellers, people who sell, right? Uh, well, if you don't have buyers and you don't have an uh, immediate chance of disposing of the child, they also sell human organs. I mean, very, I'm <laughs> being very hard, I know, but that's what can happen. Why would they want to quickly release? Because they have to feed the child. They have to keep the child healthy for to be able to sell. Even if you want to sell fish, the fish must be healthy before you sell. Mm. So I think when they buy, they get into the trouble of maintaining the child in health mm. so that he looks like a good product to pass to the next person. And that's why when the bargain comes, I think, and the man says, no, I can't take for 700, you agree for 500, let's just leave my hand, let's just leave my hand. But at the end of the day, if it comes to the place where nobody wants to buy, I, the, the, the ugly thing that can happen is that they think of uh, those who buy human parts. Okay, aside staying in the... Uh, in correctional facilities for number of years that, of course, they will be required of whosoever that is, is involved in this crime. Like the mothers? Yes. Uh, no, or no, even the individuals, the individuals who sell. Yes. Uh, what other punishment do they give that can actually make these people, that can serve as a deterrent to others who are planning to do this kind of business or who are already into okay. the business because I believe that if there is something so serious, others will learn from it. Well, human trafficking has become an international problem. And for all such things, there is a cooperation or collaboration between the, uh, the countries and the United Nations. Hmm. So I am thinking that while I don't know what's in the, in the books, what the books, our law books say, about such things, but I'm thinking that as of today, there will be measures, clearly set out ways of um, punishing or dealing with people who get involved with that. Being locked up is one thing. I'm also thinking that they may have to go through some sort of uh, uh, counseling. You know, the thing that makes you think to sell a human being, something is wrong with your system. You know, just like somebody who goes out to just kill people, something is wrong with the system. So there might be some sort of counseling in the press of, of incarceration while they are locked up to help them understand, uh, uh, have a better picture of value for life, as I think. But I think that, I also think that beyond the jail term or lock-up term, um, you cannot kill the person, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay, so talking about that uh, human trafficking is now a global thing. Yes, it is. Um, could it be as a result of poor uh, the ec uh, economic challenges in the country, in the world, or, no, or no, what, no. It, what could it be? Uh, see, people, there, are, there are people who because, are... Uh, because, sorry, people cannot just do this for fun. No, no, it's not for fun, it's for money. It's not for fun, it's for money. People set up to do things that give them money. There are... The other day I was listening to some, some, uh, um, some story in Scandinavia this Scandinavia, mm. uh, not Scandinavia, these people who, have, uh, who don't go into war, we have, we have our, our leaders steal our money and go and keep that country, I forgot the name, where prostitution is legal. And in places like that, when people who are businessmen mm. sort, they, they want to expand their business, they are involved in this human trafficking process to bring in girls for the work. So it's business. Human trafficking is not a matter of I'm hungry. 
It's just like drug addiction and drug abuse. It's, it's business. They have uh, people that protect it. They have people that are paid to make it happen. They have facilities. I've seen stories and read issues where people have been involved with intercontinental trafficking of human beings. And they have facilities, houses, vehicles that, can, that, that, that make it happen. So it's business. It's not just hunger. Okay, in other words, to fight this, it is not just from the top, but from the roots. Yes, you, you, you fight it from... But yes. where is the root? It, the root is, first of all, the person who gets that ugly mindset of to want to sell a child. Okay. Because if there is no supply, there will be no demand. Okay. So if there is nobody who wants to sell, then those who want to buy may not see to buy. That is where all these false stories about, come to UK, I want to give you a job, follow mm. me to Italy, I have employment. Wow. And they take them out and hold their passports and they keep them locked up. In fact, by the time they get to Europe, they tell them, you're already owing me $500, $500,000. I think I have a job for you. So you need to follow me to, I mean, somewhere around the world. Yes. I, I have a job for yes. you. Yes. So they go and then they are, they are locked up. They hold their passport. Okay. They tell them, you already owe me $500,000. So every day you go and prostitute, you pay back some with interest. So okay. they never get free out of it. Out of it. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know what? Even here, I know people, I know somebody, not people, I know somebody. Mm. A third year old female student, I won't mention the university, mm. where a lady that came from Lagos and told them, Oh, business, business, business. I think them. I think you have told me yes. this thing and, and get it was, to Lagos. Yes, and it was marketing. Not. It was marketing marketing the girl. That wow. is also it's not out of the country. The mother didn't sell her, mm. but those things happen. But why should you even follow someone without concrete evidence? Because you are looking for a job, you just heard that there's a job somewhere, and then you just move. You know, this particular evidence. person. And most of these people don't get to relate with the elderly ones. This because... particular person, when we talked about the matter, mm. because I didn't raise it, because of my drug, work in drugs, mm. we got to get involved. Mm. The story was that she wanted a kind of lifestyle. Amazing. <laughs> All right, let's look at this second story.